Well, my dad uh, is certainly was certainly an unlikely convert, one who was not interested in spiritual things. I think even kind of angry and hostile for a very long time. My family's Jewish, my dad grew up Jewish, but my dad came to faith, saving faith in his mid to late 80s. Um, and he died four years after that when he was 90 and uh, requested that we sing Amazing Grace at wow. his funeral. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is amazing. And, you know, I think the thing is, again, the title grabbed me, Unlikely Converts, because I think we have this picture, and especially here in Canada, maybe, maybe less so in the United States, is that this is a secular culture. People aren't interested in God, but that's not true. Well, we never know what's going on behind the, their face, behind what's the story. And I, I just found as I interviewed these, these recent converts that they all seemed like they were not interested from the outward outside. But as, you, as their story developed, there was, there was a tremendous hunger. So we should never assume that there's not something else going on. People are wondering, they're asking questions, they're, uh, they're fearful. We, we live in some very difficult times and people are asking tough questions, even if they're not asking them out loud. So um, you just never know what the backstory is before we engage them. Should we then think of it rather than, oh, they're not interested or they might be interested, is to make the assumption that maybe everybody's interested, whether like, and you, in your book, you talk about the A to Z, you know, A, not interest, very little, to where you, as you get towards the, you know, towards Z, people are more interested. Well, I don't know if I'd, I would assume that everybody's interested. What I, what I do want to assume and push is God can work in any possible way, and he can work anywhere on that A to Z scale. And uh, God is powerful enough to overcome any kind of objections or resistance. So I think the important thing is we, we step into a spiritual conversation, and we know that we're not, there's not just two conversation partners in this. God is also superintending and can draw people against all odds. So when you started to hear these stories, and I know it was more of an, an academic mm -hmm. assignment, right. but then you thought, hey, I need to tell these stories and share these stories. What was your, kind of your motivation you know, for writing the book and, and wanting people to hear these stories? Well, my, my motivation originally was writing a doctoral dissertation. How's that for exciting? Yeah. <laughs> I, and, I, and I had agreed to interview 40 college students who had become Christians within the last two years. So it was only an academic exercise. It wasn't, oh, someday I'm going to write a book. But the stories were so great. They were so unlikely, surprising, moving. Uh, several people cried when they retold their story. I cried several times. There, there were so many of the stories that uh, I knew these were people who had become Christians. But when they started telling their story, I would think, oh, if I didn't know how the story ends, I, would, I wouldn't bet a lot of money on this one. Um, but they were just so moving and so powerful and so almost funny. Uh, several of them started out as very hostile. Um, they, they were invited to some evangelistic event and they, they decided to go to make fun of the Christians, to be an antagonist, to, to be someone who's going to disrupt the meeting. Um, and, and yet they heard something that drew them in and drew them further along. So. I, I just found myself telling other people these stories and I thought, you know what, people need to hear this. This needs to not just be in a doctoral dissertation for sure. And, you know, I think the thing is, that, you know, when we think about, uh, you know, friendship evangelism, and I agree, you know, you build relationships, but that's something you're saying in the book that, yeah, okay, it's good to build relationships, but you don't necessarily have to have a close relationship with somebody to share the message of Jesus. Right. We, we want to develop relationships. We want to become all things to all people. We want to find common ground. We want to um, conduct ourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, outsiders. That's the phrase in Colossians. But what I did find was you, you, you didn't need all that deep of a relationship for the gospel to be powerfully uh, penetrating. Because because God's word cuts through, even if you don't necessarily have that relationship. We, we certainly want to pursue that, but um, there were several people who told me it, it was a total stranger that had the most impact in their, in their coming to faith. The, the one story I really like, and it really caught my attention, was this young lady mocking her Christian friends. Oh my, yes. Now, all of a sudden she's interested, but I can't go to them. 
So that's the importance of a stranger. We right. don't know where we might be in, in the story. Right. Her story began with how much she made fun of Christians. She told me she had a number of blasphemous t-shirts that she made sure to wear when she knew she was going to be around Christians. I didn't ask for what those t-shirts said. I, I didn't want to know. <laughs> no. um, but so she would just make fun and, you know, insult them. It was a total stranger handing out information on her college campus about an event about how do you know if you're going to heaven? How's that for subtle? <laughs> And she sees this piece of paper and she says, that, that's a question I need an answer to. So she struck up a conversation with this total stranger. And that was the person God used to over several weeks of conversation. When, when my interview with her was all over and all, all of my interviews were close to an hour in length, we're all finished, we're all done. I turned off my recorder, I put away my notebook, I'm standing up shaking her hand, thanks so much, this was really helpful. She said, oh wait, I just thought of something. And I thought, no, you can't, you can't think of something. She said, no, no, really, I, just, I think this is important. It had to be a stranger. And I thought, oh. You're right, let me take out the notebook and write this down. It had to be a total stranger because I had alienated and, and I, I couldn't admit to my Christian friends that I might be interested. So you just never know of the total stranger. That sometimes the total stranger without that relationship is, is the better person. Um, to, to help move people along. One of the things, and, and it's so important as you got to in the book, is to remember that this is a supernatural thing, people coming to in a relationship with Jesus. There, so, but if you have this one perspective, it's all God, I don't have to do anything, or as I used to feel, it's all on me, it's a partnership. Right, and, and trying to figure out how those work together, I, I, I don't think we can no. figure it out. God works in, the, in what only he can do. He opens blind eyes. He, he raises people from the dead. He, he softens hardened hearts. But he uses ordinary people with ordinary conversations, with yeah. questions that might seem almost, almost like a throwaway question of, hey, do you, do you ever think much about spiritual stuff? Um, God uses those kind of ordinary things and ordinary words in extraordinary supernatural ways. I want to quote uh, Tim Keller, a well-known New York pastor and author, and he says when it comes to preaching, there is one gospel, yet there are clearly different forms in which the one gospel can be expressed. How do we know how to approach a person? Mm -hmm. You know, and you talked about we live in a culture where there's just a lot of sexual brokenness. Um, so how do we know where that, that ramp is to, to be able to share that message of Jesus? Well, um, one of the most beautiful things I found in my interviews was hearing how different people had very, very different starting points in their journey. I mean, for some people, they felt terribly guilty, and so they latched on to the aspect of the gospel of forgiveness. Some people didn't, didn't necessarily feel guilty. They felt confused. Life doesn't make any sense. So they latched on to the idea that the gospel is this worldview that makes sense. And if you think about all the different ways the, the gospel is described or referred to in the scriptures, a lot of different, mm -hmm. different terms. Well, Jesus he, himself, right? Jesus told different Herbals, kinds of yeah. stories. He approached Nicodemus very differently than he approached the woman at the well. So I think part of our task is to, to think deeply about the gospel message and to think about how multifaceted and rich it is. And then in conversations with people, we, we, we need to ask God for wisdom. We need to ask him to give us insight of what, what aspect of this person's story connects with some aspect of the gospel. It means listening a lot. It means asking good questions and drawing people out and trying to, trying to listen, not just what people say, but even the, the tone or uh, attitude that's behind their words. And just out of, almost out of time here, but one thing I do want to hit on, the importance of even writing down your own personal testimony, mm. your own story. Uh, then when you do have opportunity to share, then you can, you can go with it. The one-minute version, the two-minute version, and maybe the five-minute version. That's right, yeah. And, and writing it down forces you to make decisions of, okay, what really needs to be included? Because from our standpoint... Well, it's all wonderful, it's all important, and there, you know, there's a million details, but if we're thinking, okay, how do I communicate this to someone so that they want to explore, okay, what does it mean to know God in a personal way? And you're right, we need to have the, 
the, the, the 32nd version, the one minute version, the two minute version, and then see how people respond. And if they, if they ask for more, well, then we deliver more. And we don't have to dump everything on them at no, once. No, I don't think so. Randy, thank you so much. Randy Newman is the author, Unlikely Converts, Improbable Stories of Faith and What They Teach Us About Evangelism. It's very practical. I personally love the book because I like to read stories about testimonies. And the big part of this program, 100 Huntley Street, is people sharing the stories of how they found Jesus and that amazing journey. And for everybody, it is a little bit different. If you have never made that decision, we're talking about this Jesus today, you you can give us a call, somebody to talk to, and you don't have to, you know, make that decision today, but certainly somebody would love to explain what it is to be in relationship with God. Give us a call, 1-866-273-4444.